folks. Welcome back to Schoolhouse Cracked. I know you've been sitting on the internet waiting for us to get back to you. Dr. Marcus Motor Chandler, uh, professor of all things good and uh, advisor to me both as a, as a parent, you're going to find out in this episode, and as a professional. I really look forward to what you have to say today in today's episode about uh, going to college and how to get kids there. Yep, so it's that time of the year, folks. Um, whether you're teachers in a school, administrators in a school, or parents at home, uh, nervous about where your kid might be going to school, um, uh, where they're going to college, or setting your young student up to be prepared for college. Um, this is something where, this is kind of where my roots are, Brett. Yeah. You know, I started in public uh, public education as a counselor, and, and specifically a college and career counselor. Yeah. Um, and, and so I'm really more interested in hearing kind of uh, your perspectives as a dad, yeah. um, knowing that you have three children kind of in the, the peak areas, the prime areas of post-secondary college-going readiness yeah. um, in uh, having a middle schooler, a uh, young high schooler, and an old high schooler. Yeah, yeah. Uh, here, here's the funny deal, though, folks. If you have missed previous episodes, which I, I, I doubt that any of you have missed this at all, but Dr. Marcus Motor Chandler and my wife, uh, began their careers really together. My wife was a young, uh, young guidance counselor, and they did a job share. And um, essentially, my wife was a college and career counselor and an expert in this process, along with Dr. Marcus Motor Chandler. So this is a this is something that in our world we've actually. Uh, I'm not going to get into our other business, yeah, but, we, yeah. but we've actually earned income on, <laughs> on, on, on helping people with this decision. So I have an eighth grader, a 10th grader, and um, a junior. And right now, I'm going, to, I'm going to work my way youngest to oldest. My, my eighth grader at this point in time uh, is a good student. My college and career uh, pathway for, for her is for us well, to I'm going to pause you there, though, Brett. What is her perspective on that because you said your plan for her let's start with where her plan is for herself and then get into your did plan. you just punch me in the gut right there i did i think you did. i punched you in something <laughs> uh, <laughs> it landed but no start with where she's at That's and then i'd question. like you to get where you're at okay uh, her where she is at is just in you know, all of the hearsay of her her siblings her parents her cousins her friends um, so tell, the youngest hearing all these kind yeah, of other thoughts. And just, and just like, you know, I, I know this might sound cheesy, uh, Marcus, to you, but, you know, you, as you know, we do watch a lot of college football and in our house. If you watch college sports, uh, every college competition, they allow each of the competitors to have a commercial, not allow, but or they purchase or whatever. There's, there's always an advertisement for that university yeah, of course. To to the audience. So if if we're gonna and most of those are big state schools. Yeah. That are primarily football schools. They're not small level arts private schools. Yeah. Yeah. yeah correct. But they they do a a really great job of pre presenting themselves as career pathways and academically they they move away from the the being in the crowd and into the unique things that they can offer because they're big or whatever yeah, in absolutely. this particular case. So I guess that's, that's where, where my daughter is, is my daughter knows she's going to go to college. Mm -hmm. She has not developed an interest in a specific college. She's not developed an interest in a specific And, I, and I'm going to interject at this point as an eighth grader, nor should she. Yeah, that's what – I, I'm totally it always drives me nuts to hear a seventh grader say, like, I'm going to the University of Iowa. Yeah. It's like, you don't know a damn thing about the University right. of Iowa. Or I'm going to be, my favorite one is, I'm going to be an engineer. Yeah. Engineer is one of the broadest descriptions of what a human can do oh, in their specialties career. Specialties and subfields. And <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, so we're at that point with her. But I guess in, in our household and in her school, in the school district we're in, there's this constant reminder that you're on the college pathway, and if you continue, you're going to get somewhere mm -hmm. in that big system. Um, my middle son is... Well, I mean, let's circle back to your youngest, though. Go ahead. So it, it, when you're at the dinner table at home as a parent, and she comes home, and it, it, when there's generally a dialogue around life or careers or college, in eighth grade, what does that look like with you and your youngest? Uh, that, that looks like... I mean, this is... I mean, just to be honest... It means she has said these words. I will not go where my brothers are going. Okay. <laughs> and I and and at, and in eighth grade. Yeah. Yeah. Pruning your options for whatever reason is just as important as selecting your options. Yeah, and I will also say this: uh, my daughter's interests are entrepreneurial and creative, like her mother. 
And I think that my daughter is under a false assumption that she has to go a traditional co- college pathway. Mm, mm, I'm actually not sure if, it, if, we're, if we're looking back on this episode three years from now and, and talking about her as a junior and senior, I'm not so sure that a traditional four-year college uh, is going to provide her with what she needs. Yeah. Um, and, and you know that's something I firmly believe. Yeah. As, as somebody who's a college and career counselor um, and who moved into other, other positions, um, valuing career over college yeah. first. Everybody has a career. You've heard me say this a hundred times. Yeah. Everybody has a career. Not everybody goes to college. Yeah. And we get it backwards by saying college and career, by exploring career options first. Yeah. That will inform the necessity to attend college in some career fields. In others, maybe not. So yeah, ab- absolutely. Uh, as you know, I have three older brothers that are in different professions and are highly successful. I have a wife that's highly successful. If you just take those four people, my three older brothers and my wife, uh, my wife and one of my brothers didn't need to go to college. Mm, mm, mm-hmm. uh, and not a four-year college, not a bachelor's degree. But by the nature of their profession and, wor- and working hard and engaging in it, they could have entered uh, totally yeah. by bypassing that system or structure. Yeah, we, we, we know in popular media mm-hmm. dozens of examples of extremely successful entrepreneurs, business people, um, Uh, innovators who either didn't go to college or went to college and dropped out because they knew they didn't need it to start their business. It was more about stick to itness, resilience, um, and networking. Yeah. And yeah. And and then college, if you, you, I mean, you, you, I mean, you know, my wife, she's a college and career counselor, but when she talks to my daughter about college, it's about the four year experience. It's about this kind of like coming of age experience and when she talks about sitting in that lecture class of 300 or about about experience or about she's really not even interested in programs or internships Mm -hmm. she knows the value of them but for for our daughter she's really talking about safety and enjoyment and connectivity and this experience which a lot of places in a lot of different ways you you could experience if you live in a cool town like like we do uh you really don't necessarily need that that uh that you know, 90,000 football foot stadium. Well, you don't need it in our town. Yep. The, the town itself and how people get out are better than that. Uh, the point, though, is, is that, uh, you know, so the, the for, for her, for an eighth grader, it's an I don't know and an I don't care uh, just yet. And I'm, as far as, as, as how she approaches her education, I'm fine with that. Yeah. And so uh, before we move on to the middle, um, so I started off as a college and career counselor, you know that, yep. and folks at home, they may not know, I, I functioned as the career, uh, director of career and technical education. And so those things may seem polar opposite, career and technical education, well, it used to be called vocational yeah, education vocation, yep. and college and career, but the, the overlap there is very important. And that was transformative in my experience as an educator in prioritizing career exploration over focusing on a college, focusing on a major. And, and so if we're talking about one, uh, three things to do. Uh, three things to do in preparing your, your young student for college readiness. In eighth grade, I would say prioritize career exploration over a specific college and a specific major. Once you cr- explore your career options and things you're interested in, those other things will fall into place. And, and, and Marcus, to make it more simple than that, and I appreciate you saying those because those are extremely valuable for families at home that are going through this process and thinking about it. For me, though, when you say that, it popped right into my head. My job is to make sure that I am discovering and celebrating my daughter's interests, strengths, passions, and strengths yeah. and passions. That's, That's it. it. That's mm-hmm. just it. Like you're beautiful at this or you're wonderful at that or geez, that's not something you're going to want to make a career out of because so on and so forth. But the whole point is, is just generating interest and passion. Uh, you know, I don't, I don't know that if I'm any good at being an assistant principal, and I have no idea if I was an excellent. Ah, you have your good days. Oh uh, yeah, or an excellent teacher. But what I can tell you is that I get up every morning with a fire, a fervor, for what I'm doing, and and I guess that's all I really want for my kids is that their education allows them to pursue that. Yep. Absolutely. Um, but you know, my middle son is. Um, so so yeah. Now that we've laid the foundation, assuming just some exploration around passions, interests, strengths. Now you have a 10th grader. Yeah, yeah. And so here's the deal on him. Again, this is a, you know, this is a weird thing to say. We're talking about a, a child that is six foot four inches tall, 225 pounds, and is an excellent athlete. He really might actually be a Division I college athlete. I'm going to pause you there because that's what every parent says, but go, keep going. Yeah, no, 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 no. And I, I, but he is, he is a very talented no, athlete. No, and, yeah. and I get that. And I, I can tell you as somebody who has three older brothers that were Division 
one college athletes and I too went to college to, to uh, at a division one school to play baseball. I can tell you that at least the genetic piece of that, uh, he's a skilled athlete. Yeah, he has that, but it's, that's not the conversation in the house. That's not the meal ticket. Yeah. It, it's not, and it's not the conversation in the house. It, it, it's, it really doesn't pay for shit. It sometimes drains the college experience. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the sports that he plays is baseball. Uh, baseball players in, in spring semester miss like 50 to 60 percent of their class time. It does. It, if it doesn't lead to professional athletics, which it won't in my kid's case, it leads to like actual overstress yeah. on on er, on earning your degree. But the whole the whole point though is that my son's gifts as a tenth grader are extremely hard to measure academically. He's creative, he is compassionate, he has empathy, uh, he's funny, he has a, um, an unusual strength for interpersonal skills that I know that are gonna be valuable uh, in, in, a, in a work field. And so when it comes to college, whatever his desire to play football or baseball is in, in, in college, my wife and I are talking to him about small places mm, mm. places where if you are let's say a, a, a tight end on a college football team maybe it's not in a stadium about the size of a high school mm. maybe that that charisma uh leads you to really knowing your professors better or the head of the department better and, and opening some opportunities around leadership and club engagement and, and extracurricular in, opportunities and internships jobs yeah, yeah. We're, we're actually hoping that, that for this child somebody in at their college or university mm -hmm. helps them see their career pathway he's invested so much in athletics and we've invested so much in helping him survive academics that those things, those skills that he's developing as a, a leader and through commitment and through dealing with disappointment and for being a pick-me-up guy for his teammates, I know those have value. What college or university is he going to go to where those are actually seen right. as professional skills that somebody helps guide him through? Right. And, and, and so that at that point, for a 10th grader, I would say is item number two for parents at home. Uh, of, of things to do in your in your young students development for college readiness mm -hmm. is focus on the best fit mm -hmm. so you're in 10th grade you're starting to maybe explore some options maybe some career fields maybe some majors maybe some universities but focusing on the holistic experience and not getting hung up on a brand name so like Brett you said you watch uh, college football on Saturdays and you see all those fancy commercials it's easy for parents to get hung up and kids to get hung up on a brand name yeah I'll, I'll, I'll provide this example um, I have a cousin much younger than me really should be my nephew if anything um, and wanted to be an engineer mm -hmm. we, we just said engineers have this huge level of specialization in subfields um, and was hung up on going to CU Boulder University of Colorado Boulder um, and I don't have anything against University of Colorado Boulder. No, great major, engineering program. Great engineering program, major university, um, but wanted to go there for the culture. And what really he was saying is he wanted to go to CU to party. Yeah. But he was actually a highly, he's a highly talented young man uh, academically. And he had never heard of some of the top engineering programs in the country, Rose Holman, mm -hmm. Harvey Mudd, mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, programs out of North Dakota. I mean, Carnegie Mellon, yeah. uh, great programs. And, and so ultimately he's now a junior at, at Harvey Mudd and he absolutely loves it. Very small school but highly specialized in engineering. And so it took me a while to circle him around just in, in casual dialogue. And I can't take full credit for this, obviously. Um, but to see that uh, the fit was better than the brand name. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Even even on a, a really micro uh, yeah. level, Marcus, like for my, for my son, um, the places that I will help guide him to, I'm going to look, I'm going to look at how long people have been there, mm. professors, mm. deans, chairs of departments, yeah. different things, because if, if they community, yes, yeah. if they've, yeah, if, if they've, if they love where they're at and they're not climbing themselves, the university ladder, they're more likely to, uh, both notice, uh, my son's intangible gifts. And they're also more likely to be invested. So it, it's just folks there. I went to a large university and had a wonderful experience. It provided everything that I needed to be successful. I'm just not sure that my experience is the same experience I need for my son. And that's just something for you guys to consider out there if you're an audience, like what's best for them, not necessarily what's best for the family tradition or, or kind of what the, uh, the Rose Bowl told you to go to. Yeah. Uh, uh, my, old, my oldest son right now is, is a uh, junior, and has major milestones coming up. He yep. has his college admissions exams coming up in the spring. Mm -hmm. I know he's probably taking 
uh, a couple already and has a couple under his belt, but we'll take another in the spring for the state. Um, looking at collecting letters of recommendation in mm -hmm. the coming spring, looking at finalizing his college list. So talk to me through the process where you're at. There. Awesome. Great. Thank you. And, and, and folks, this one I'm, I'm like absolutely dead serious about. Uh, it, it, we have conversations with him about uh, what kind of person he is right now. I know he'll have people who will write letters of recommendation for him. I'm wondering if he's doing enough diverse things to establish what he, he's a young man of fine character. He's also an introvert. Mm. Uh, and he's also uh, somebody who has a hard time with self-advocacy. It's time for us to make sure that he's involved with church youth group appropriately, that he's, he's, he's doing things in the community that show his diverse interests and his diverse skills. I, I am, and we are cognizant, that he needs to be more than a student. He is more than a student. Mm -hmm. He's done tremendous uh, things that are valuable in our, in our neighborhood, in our area, uh, but... Uh, he does need to start doing some of those things that, to, to be honest, are marketable for him right. if he wants to do, um, w wants to have every option that he's capable of. So that's that's one thing that's that's going on with him. Well, and, and, and so that kind of leads me into item number three. When you're mm -hmm. in, when you're in a junior, so item number three, parents, you can focus on with your students, especially sophomore, junior year. Um, when you say trying to increase marketability or or admi admis admissions likelihood. <laughs> Um, it is very evident to admissions folks on on an application things that the student did just to increase the likelihood of being admitted and not because they actually cared about it. So as your student is engaging in things that are that are important to them, rather than add do ten activities to get on your resume and make you look good for admissions, focus on two things that you actually care you give a damn about. Mm -hmm. your your kid loves is an expression of their passion and is generally related. Or even if it's unrelated, something they're they're invested in, they're passionate about, and they would do even if they weren't trying to apply to college. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, uh, as especially as a whole person, you and you and I have gotten into things. And I'm sure if people do watch us regularly or listen to us regularly, they're, they're probably able to develop an understanding of where we're at on on some of these spectrums, a political spectrum uh, in particular. But uh, it doesn't matter where you're at on an ideological or political spectrum. Um, do something that matters mm -hmm. and 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 follow follow through on something that's important um, it's it's okay to be unique take take the initiative mm -hmm. um, and so that's that's where we're at uh, with with that child is is helping him see the the wonderful things that he is and can do and asking him to be more intentional at this point about following through on some of those things and being a little bit more uh, diverse. We're also at the stage right now where we're, we're going to uh, college visits. Yep, absolutely. And those are, are laden with all kinds of things because we have minor investment in their college education. Like a lot of, of people out there, we are terrified of college debt mm, and definitely. so one of the things that we are doing with this child is talking to him about what he wants to do what he, it is time now for him to, to think about those career possibilities and how post-secondary education could lead him to those things sure. and we are examining colleges for their programming for the success of their programming for their placement of the, of mm -hmm. of their students in specific program areas and we're comparing that to what's what's affordable what's a good fit what's he, affordable yes yeah. uh, for, for us he's going to get to decide what's a good fit mm -hmm. at this point in time we are absolutely eliminating things that he cannot afford or we cannot afford and we are absolutely el eliminating some dream schools mm -hmm. that aren't in line with his interests yeah yeah, I, I mean, everybody wants to attend Harvard, but if Harvard doesn't have your major, yeah. there's no point in attending Harvard. Right. And so that leads me into one other point I'm going to make before we wrap up this episode, Brett, is uh, uh, I had a, a colleague, a boss at one point, and and uh, firm believer in career and technical education. But the, the thing I ca kept hearing is uh, career exploration needs to happen. We need kids to figure out what they're going to major and what they're going to study in, in high school before we send them to college because college is too expensive. Mm -hmm. And it's too expensive to, for them to figure it out once they get there, like we may have done when we were that age. And I call bullshit on that for a couple mm -hmm. reasons. Um, the National Center for Education Statistics has, in 2021 and 2020, only 64% of students nationwide in a four-year degree graduate in six years. Oof. 
in six years. So yes, there's cost associated with that, but forcing that down to your, your youngest, forcing your eighth grader to engage in a four-year career path in high school next year where she's tied to those classes and has to figure that shit out as an eighth grader is asinine. Yeah. That she still needs the opportunity to explore her passions, her interests. And when you pigeonhole a kid into that, you, 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 we're not solving the problem. If the problem is college affordability, the solution is not forcing an eighth grader to figure out what they want to major in in ninth grade and then putting them into to a career and technical education pathway. So I, I'll push back on that every, yeah. every time. It's about exploring passions, interests, and not limiting opportunities. But the minute you force an eighth grader or ninth grader into a pathway that limits their exploration of other areas, you're doing them more of a disservice and more likely increasing the likelihood that they're going to get to college and change their major anyway. Yeah. So um, thinking all the way back to your youngest, but to your eighth grader, knowing that you're encouraging passion, exploration, and interest. Uh, give, me, give me one thing that you're going to do in the next week with each one of the, your, your kids at the, at the ages they're at to further this dialogue for college readiness? Yeah, I think for my eighth grader, it is to continue to notice uh, the things that she does outside of school that I know that she loves mm -hmm. and help her figure out how those are uh, related to school. Yeah. Find, a, find a problem and solve yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. And just, or just, I love this, and I'm like, well, where do you get to love this at school and and just and if know, not how can we expand on it yeah, outside or just it doesn't even i don't even need to put pressure on the school to to meet her needs for passion i just need her to understand that maybe the school can't meet the needs for her passion or interests and that's actually okay yeah absolutely yeah you know they don't they don't i don't expect uh, i think she's entrepreneurial mm -hmm. in her approach and i do not expect her middle school to start a business program yeah. next yeah, absolutely. next semester so yeah. the whole point is just is is just to keep her excited about what she's excited about so i'm going to uh, do that in the next week um, what about your middle <clears throat> with my middle son i'm going to i'm going to let him know that um, there is a real downside to playing college sports, mm -hmm. and I just I just want him to know the realities of it. I'm going to pull it's not up as glamorous. As it no, is. I'm going to pull up a, a, a fit, well, you and I have seen the statistics so many times. We've had these conversations mm -hmm. with so many kids, but I am going to pull up exactly how little money he's going to get for being an athlete. Uh, <laughs> I am going to pull up exactly how few um, students uh, play four years at a university. There's a whole lot of people like myself who entered into Division One college sports and didn't play more than a year. I played a year. Yeah, yeah so yeah. it's, it, you know, like, what? how many people actually follow uh, through through with it? And I'm, I'm also going to just say, hey, hey, bud, you've had a tough quarter, and it's because you got laryngitis, and then after you got laryngitis, he had, like, a stomach bug for a single day. This essentially meant that he missed four days this semester. That crushed his grades yeah. and I'm going to let him know, Hey, laryngitis is also a baseball schedule. Yeah. It also means you're not in right. school. Absolutely. Uh, and I think with, with my oldest, I'm just going to uh, take him to some places um, and let him experience actual activities on campus instead of the traditional college visit. I don't know if it means us going to a play or it means us going to a ball game or if it means us going to like one of those museums or just walking around at night so he right. can see the college scene. But I think that my son, he's an introvert, he's a do-gooder, he's going to be successful no matter what college he goes right. to. Absolutely. I think he really needs to find a place. He where needs he to see himself there. Yes, yeah. yeah. Um, and, and so, folks, we know not everybody has the opportunity to travel to a college campus, but there are tons of opportunities for virtual tours, mm -hmm. um, having Zoom sessions with current students, alumni, professors, sitting in on a class remotely, and so seeing yourself there. That, that's, yeah. I think, a great I'm gonna, idea. I'm going to tell you what I'm not going to do or what I'm going to stop doing. Okay. Yep. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop projecting my pathway onto my kids. Mm-hmm. I've I've done a great a I've done I've done a great work. job of telling them all about their dad, uh. <laughs> and I've done a, a a great job of of reinforcing my own learned experience. Sure. It's it's uh, my big stop doing, and I challenge this for families out there is to, is to stop making them feel like they have to follow in their father's footsteps. Mm -hmm. If they know my values and my principles, they're gonna they're going to utilize them or, or not. 
as an eighth grader or tenth, yeah, as an eighth grader, tenth grader, and eleventh grader, I think it's time for me to help them just uh, discover what they're interested yeah. in. What are what are what are your final takeaways? Your absolute dues. So the three things, the absolute dues, are more tied to what the age of your child is, and mm -hmm. so for the eighth grader, continuing to prioritize passions, interests, um, and, and allowing opportunities to really hone that in the career, the major, that'll come from exploring those passions. Um, number two, uh, looking for fit. Rather than looking at that brand name of a college or I went there, I want my kid to go there, what's the right fit for my kid knowing that my kid is a unique individual and what may have been right for me when I was 18 is very, very different 20 years later than was right for my 18 year old. And then finally, um, exploring for the oldest, for the junior, exploring places that they can see themselves on campus. If you can go to campus, great. If you can do that remotely, that's fine as well. But beginning to find a place where you fit, you belong, and if you're an introvert, an extrovert, you have one skill set or another, you can lean into those, apply them, and over your four years in college or six years in college, um, lend those towards a career path. So those are the kind of the three takeaways, three keep doings, depending on the age of your child. Yeah, and, and so thank you again for joining us here at Schoolhouse Cracked. Dr. Marcus Motor Chandler, my, uh, your career and college counselor, you work with college students, you now help people get into uh, school counseling, and my guess, my uh, challenge to you uh, this week or this semester is to, is to really push those soon-to-be college and career counselors and soon-to-be school counselors into really uh, understanding that there's not an A squared plus B squared equals C squared when it comes yeah, to choosing a code. Yeah. So this is a part one of an ongoing series regarding college and college admissions. Um, be sure to tune in to our next episode. Brett, this is actually our very last episode in this recording studio. Yeah, yeah. We're moving on up. We're like the Jeffersons. You're going to notice some serious quality changes, and, <laughs> and we're moving on up. So we want to thank our listeners, our viewers, those who provided feedback. Um, we're in a place where we can expand the quality of our programming, some additional opportunities. So stay tuned. Um, next time you see us, we'll be in a new location covering some of our same topics. With me as always, Mr. Brett Derrickson, parent of three students, all going different pathways, all great pathways. Um, and I always really appreciate hearing your opinion as, yeah. a, as, a, as a parent, Brett. Yeah, my good friend, Dr. Motor Chandler, doesn't mind throwing grenades at me and making me feel like I've uh, actually... Uh, push my kids in the exact opposite direction we talk about. So be sure to like us on Facebook, subscribe to our YouTube channel, download us on all your favorite podcast channels, send us your thoughts, comments, and feedback. Where are your kids at in the college-going process, parents? Schoolhousecracked at gmail.com. We'll see you in our new studio.